Let's talk about vaginal yeast infection or vaginal thrush. Every woman's worst nightmare. The pain, the itching, the discomfort. Oh my God. If you've never had vaginal yeast infection, you don't know what God has done for you. But if you've had it, then you get it. The girlies who get it, get Today it. Today I'll be telling you all you need to know about vaginal yeast infection, from the symptoms you might experience, the causes, the treatment, and some preventive measures that you need to start taking today. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Health Corner. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Nindi Shalom, and I bring to you health information so you can make better health choices every single day. If this is content you like to see, please subscribe smash that subscribe button like and share this video so you don't miss out on any other updates that come from us without further ado let's get right into it before you start judging yourself too hard for having a yeast infection you should know that at least three out of four women will have one yeast infection in their lifetime yes that's how common it is and it just doesn't occur as a result of poor hygiene only you just might be too clean, that's why you're getting a yeast infection. And before you come for me, I'll explain in a bit. Also, you should know that this infection is not a sexually transmitted infection. I just had to clear that up. This infection is more common in women who are sexually active, pregnant women, people with diabetes, especially uncontrolled diabetes, people with HIV, or if you're immunodepressed in some form, by that you might be on chemotherapy, or you know, you just had like a major surgery. People who are on long-term use of antibiotics, and I don't want you to get me wrong on this point, consuming antibiotics is good, but if you're on antibiotics for a long time, it washes off both the good and the bad bacteria in the vagina and it causes now the yeast to be like hey it's like i have some space so they want to grow more right so that's why the long-term use of antibiotics can put you at risk of having a yeast infection it is very common in people who like douching douching is inserting something into the vagina to help wash the vagina this is not good practice this messes up with the pH of the vagina. And if you watched my pre previous video on bacterial vaginosis, where I spoke about the pH of the vagina and how it controls like the growth of different bacteria that are in the vagina, you would realize that this is not good because it messes up the pH and then it causes now this bacteria, which is normal in the vagina, right? It causes it to grow more and then it starts causing problems. So you don't want to deal with all that mess that comes from douching, right? So people who douche are more at risk of developing this infection. That's why I said that if you're too clean, because it's the women who like to, you know, make sure that they wash, they use soap, they clean as much as they can. They think they're doing good, right? But they're causing some more problems. Another thing is people who like to wear tight, non-breathable underwear. Why? Because yeast likes moist environment and the vagina, the area, it's moist, it is warm. So it promotes the proliferation or the growth of this bacteria. That is why if you constantly wear like tight underwear all the time, if you're somebody who likes to swim and you don't quickly change your, your, your underwear, you're making the, the environment conducive for this bacteria to grow. That's why you're more at risk of developing this inf infection. Another thing that's commonly underlooked is chronic stress. There are studies that have shown that prolonged periods of stress has a way that it affects your body and it increases the likelihood for the growth of this bacteria. So you want to watch it, right? Avoid prolonged periods of stress. If you realize that something is weighing so much on your mind, try to get your mind off of it for some time. Try to distract yourself. Try to get your mind right because all of these things could increase your risk of developing this infection. So you ask me, how do I know that I have this infection? The number one symptom of vaginal yeast infection or vaginal thrush, like it's commonly called, is itching. The itching can get so intense that it is uncomfortable. When you're out in public, you always want to find a way to scratch down there because 
it's like you, there's this movement, right? You're, you're moving like this because you want to be able to just kind of itch or relieve the itch that is going on down there. The itching is mostly in the vulva area. The vagina is a muscular organ inside, right? So you have the vulva, you have the lips of the vagina, you have the vulva, and then you have the vagina inside. So this itching is mostly on the vulva area, not inside the vagina. You could also experience this thick whitish vaginal discharge. It kind of looks like cottage cheese. I'm gonna put a picture on here for you guys to see it. It could also look creamy. So it's not as thick, it's more creamy. And most of the time, it doesn't really have a smell or an odor. It doesn't really smell like anything. If it starts to smell, you know, like maybe really, really bad, you might have another infection on the yeast infection that you already have. Another symptom that's common is vaginal irritation. So for people who are light skin, you may notice that the vulva area looks reddish and it can cause like this discomfort down there. It could also lead to like little cracks or fissures in the skin and it feels like your vagina is on fire because of this irritation. You could also experience like this burning sensation when you pee especially when the urine touches the vulva area. It feels like, again, your vagina is on fire because there is already irritation, redness, there are little like bruises or fissures already going down there, going on down there. So it feels very, very much uncomfortable. Another symptom that's very common, especially in my sexually active women, is pain during sex, painful intercourse. And we describe this pain as superficial. Why? Because the pain is mostly at the start of penetration. Usually during intercourse itself, it gets better. But depending on the severity of your infection, you could also experience like discomfort throughout the process of sex, making the whole experience very, very uncomfortable and unpleasurable for you. Speaking of the severity of this infection, we have two types. You have the complicated yeast infection and you have the uncomplicated yeast infection. The uncomplicated infection, just as the name describes, means that the symptoms are not as severe. It occurs maybe once in a year or once in your lifetime and it responds very, very well to over-the-counter medication or maybe a one-time treatment. Meanwhile, with complicated yeast infection, the symptoms are more severe and the infection is recurring. This means that it could occur at least three or four times every year. It doesn't respond very, very well to like over-the-counter medication. So the treatment has to go on for a longer period of time. So depending on the severity of the infection, like I said, the treatment is different. We usually treat this with antifungals. You can use clotrimazole cream. You can use the ovules, 100 milligrams. You're going to insert this into the vagina for five to seven days. My people in Cameroon, you could use Nistatin ovules. You could use Polygenax, depending on whatever your doctor recommends. However, what is recommended is fluconazole, 150 milligrams or the 200 milligrams tablet. You're going to take this in a single dose. By this, I mean, you're going to take it one time. This is for uncomplicated vaginal yeast infection. For the more severe form of this infection, I would highly, highly recommend that you speak to your doctor because the treatment takes a longer period of time. I can't tell you that you're gonna take this one time for seven days, no. The treatment can go for up to three months or six months, just depending on certain factors. So please, please, if you've experienced this infection more than three or four times in a year, if it's causing you a lot of discomfort, if it's interrupting your daily flow of life, then speak to your doctor as soon as you can. Also, there are certain probiotics that have been shown to be beneficial in preventing this infection from happening. So do your research, get some work done, do your research and see which one of those probiotics will work best for you. Speaking of prevention, how do we prevent this infection from occurring? Number one, avoid wearing tight, non-breathable underwear. Please, let that girl down there breathe. Let her breathe. It's very important. Keep the area down there very, very dry. Avoid moisture so that this bacteria doesn't, this infection doesn't grow and continue to proliferate. 
I hate to be the one to say this, but do not wear underwear that you have already worn and you haven't washed. Maybe because you're in a rush or so, like, I've seen a lot of women do this and they're like, I can wear my underwear two times. What's the big deal? It's not dirty. It is. Do not rewear your underwear unless it has been properly washed. Also, get in the habit of ironing your underwear before you wear them, especially for my ladies who have recurrent infection. It's very, very much important. Just once you're done washing, once it's dried, take some time to iron it. It doesn't have to be like every time that you wash. Maybe after every three months, after every six months, but always try to iron your underwear. Avoid douching, please. Avoid inserting unnecessary things into the vagina. The vagina is an organ. It is able to clean itself. You don't have to go and do something to help to clean your, your kidney or to clean your liver. No, the vagina cleans itself. If there's an area that you need to wash thoroughly, it is the vulva area. Use clean water. You could use soap, but on scented soaps, things that will not really cause irritation, you can use that to wash the vulva area. But the vagina, avoid douching. Don't send things in there. That girl is doing just fine. Another thing that I've heard people say on this internet is insert yogurt into the vagina that it helps to, 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 to cancel out the yeast infection or like some kind of theories that I don't even understand. Do not put yogurt in your vagina, please. Do not put yogurt in your vagina. Do not insert what is not supposed to be inserted down there. Don't put cucumber. Don't wash your vagina with salt. This doesn't help to do anything. If anything, it causes further irritation and even more damage to the already irritated uh, vagina down there. So please avoid all of these things. Another thing, as simple as this sounds, wipe from front to back. Wipe from front to back. I don't know who came up with this idea of wiping from the back to the front. It is a very, very unhygienic practice because you're taking bacteria from feces and you're bringing it around the, the, the vulva area. When you wear your underwear, once you sweat, once you know things start to get moist down there, this, this bacteria easily spread into the vagina causing problems. Wipe from front to back. It's as easy and as simple as that. Also avoid using scented products. Avoid using scented pads, scented lubricants, scented Women do a lot of things now to help the vagina smell fruity or to smell beautiful. I don't know what our problem is. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that don't be clean or don't take care of the girl down there, but do it in the way that is right. Your vagina does not have to smell like strawberry. Your vagina does not have to smell like syrup. It doesn't have to smell luscious. Your vagina just has to be clean. That's it. It just has to be clean. So avoid using scented products that are not supposed to be used down there. Avoid the unnecessary use of antibiotics. If you don't really need to take an antibiotic, don't take it. If you're taking it for long periods of time, maybe for a health condition, know that you might be more prone to developing this infection. Just talk to your doctor and they're going to find ways around it. But if you're just regular and you're fine, you have a headache, you take an antibiotic. You have a fever, you take an antibiotic. You, you, you stop your toe, you take an antibiotic. No, avoid those kind of things. It's not a very, very healthy practice. Finally, maintain proper hygiene shower every day i can't believe that i have to say this but yes you you watching me right now shower every single day when you wash make sure you dry down there keep it dry and clean wash after intercourse get in the habit of just going getting some clean water and washing down there your girl is going to thank you so so much for this practice get in the habit of changing your underwears every year at least don't be wearing that same underwear that you got five years ago and you're like oh i have so much attachment to this underwear we've it, see imagine i bought this underwear how many years ago no please please 
change your underwear every six months, every year, if you're able to, every other two years. If you're going to keep your underwear for this long, maintain proper hygiene by ironing it, washing it. Sometimes, even though you wash your underwear in bulk, just get everything out, treat it properly, wash them, iron them, and then keep them. That should be able to take you at least for a while. But changing your underwear constantly is very, very much important. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, comments. Leave them down in the comment section. I'm going to respond to them. If you found this video helpful, please smash that subscribe button. Like and share this video. I promise you there's a girl in your inbox that needs to see this video. Thank you so much for coming along with me today. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. I'm going to have them up here for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.